In today's video, I am creating three different artworks from the same images. I've chosen 10 random images I've taken in my favorite country, Norway. The rules are extremely simple. I must use all of the images in each of the edits I'm creating, and all of the edits need to also feel and look different to each other. So without further ado, let's see how I do it. Alright, so let's get started with the first image. I first edited all of the images in camera raw and I do this to just have a natural blend on all of the images so I don't have to do so much blending work in Photoshop. I began cutting a cliff out and I literally had no idea what I'm gonna create but I usually go into this flow state where I just randomly start combining images together and something comes out of it. I then had an idea of putting this cabin on top of the cliff, but the perspective was off, so I used the perspective warp tool to fix the perspective. Easily the most complicated image for me to blend and use among all of the edits was this cloud image, but I managed to make it work in all of these edits. I then used this explosive sunset image and I had to clone sub some of the cliffs out of it so they wouldn't be on the way. The next idea I had was to combine these two skies together, which created a nice faded look. I also used this mountain to create sort of a main mountain on the background. And then I wanted to start figuring out what to do with this cliff image, and I decided to use it sort of as a framing on the right side. I then cut me out of this image and added me on top of the cliff next to the cabin. I started blending all of the elements starting from the furthest object which was the mountain. I added some haze and overall I tried to make the mountain blend better with the sky. I also added a light overlay of mine which created a nice glowy look to the sunset. The blending process is maybe the most satisfying part because this is where all of the elements start to really work well together. When I have created the main blend for all of my objects, I usually want to start adding haze, glow and fog to my images and that's exactly what I did in this one too. And that just ties the whole artwork together even better. very last stages for me is to take an overlook at my artwork and see what's missing and in this case some of the highlights were missing so I created a little bit of highlighting around objects that I think needed it. At the end I also noticed that I hadn't used this boat image and uh, don't ask me why I put the boat <laughs> leaning against the cabin, it makes absolutely no sense but I had to use the image and I couldn't figure out what else to use it for. Now we are approaching the end of this edit, I usually end my edits with a camera filter and by adding a little bit of depth blur so the artwork wouldn't look as computer generated. So our first edit is now done and I must admit I am not 100% happy with how the first edit turned out. I felt a little bit rusty with my composite workflow since I hadn't created one recently. I think I could have blended a lot of the objects better and in general make it look more realistic but it is what it is. Let's move on to the next edit. Alright so it's time for the second second edit. For this one, like I did for the first one, I created a base preset that I applied to all of the images and as I said, this just helps me to not have to do so much blending work in Photoshop when I predetermine the color scheme I want to have for my edit. First edit, I used this cliff as a frame, but for this one I had an idea of having a cliff and me standing on that cliff overlooking some sort of an ocean slash water scene. I didn't really have a clue in the beginning what the end result is going to look like, but slowly piece by piece I made something again come into life. I 
had a little bit of struggles figuring out what I want to do with the cabin, so I put it on that island and I used the same perspective warp method to fix the perspective. Use this mountain image as my main background element and I also added those two skies again to this artwork. But instead of clone stamping or leaving the mountain on the right side out, I decided to keep it in because I thought it looked really nice. I also added another mountain on the left side of it and I thought that also fit perfectly into the background. the horizon I added this image of mountain layers and then I started refining the edges because the edges looked a little bit off. Then added the cloud image and you can see from this time lapse that I was struggling with blending it a little bit so I decided to leave it off for a while and continue on it later. I then began blending all of the elements together by adding a little bit of haze, adding a little bit of a blue tone on all of the elements and you can see that this starts to tie the edit together. This edit I also used a sunlight overlay but I just made it blue and less visible. Once I had blended all of the other objects, it was time to move on to the clouds and here you can see that I really struggle with trying to blend it in perfectly in there. I used some of my custom brushes to try to fake the effect better into the image and I kept just changing the overall look of it all the time and I tried several different methods but I just couldn't quite get it right. So towards the end I just decided to make it less visible and I think that blended it better. Then towards the end I took a look at my edit and tried to figure out what kind of small adjustments could I still make to blend the image better. And as always the finisher for every edit is adding a camera filter to adjust the colors and the tone a little bit. And there we go, we have our second artwork ready. And this artwork feels completely different to the first artwork and I think it really helps my workflow nowadays to blend the objects with the same colors already beforehand in camera. I used to use adjustment layers in Photoshop but now recently I switched more to using camera to create the pre-blend. Let's now still take a look at how the third artwork turned out. So here we go with the third edit. I first started out testing some ideas like putting the cabin on top of the rock and I also decided to add myself on the boat. The first two edits I used the cliffs in a completely different way and from this perspective I couldn't really use them like I used them before so I decided to add them as rock pillars on the sides and I think that worked out pretty well. I also made the decision to cut the original sky out which of course means that I then have to recreate the whole reflection on the image. I then added the mountains to the background, I used this one and then the triangle mountain on the background and then I made a decision to also blend two skies together to make the sky look a little bit more interesting. Once I had determined where I want the mountains to be, I started blending all of it together starting from the furthest object which was this triangle mountain. And just like I did in the first two artworks, I added a sun overlay to the sunset. The blending process is always the most time consuming part of any artwork that I'm creating. And here I'm just making tiny decision after each other to blend the image further. And I think the vignette really tied a lot of it together. Almost all of the edges from cutting the objects out were really weird, so I spent some time refining every single edge in the image. Then decided to clone stamp some of the objects away from the background because I thought they were a little bit distracting. 
Once I have blended all of the objects together, I needed to create the reflection. So I use color range to cut the original reflection out and I refined the selection with the lasso tool. I then combined all of the elements together and flipped everything around. I then used the selection I created to bring back some of the elements like the boat. A few things were missing from the reflection like the pillars and also the reflection of me on the boat. So I added those and flipped them around and combined them all into one layer and added a little bit of path blur to make it look more like water. Once the reflection was done, I started adding fog, glow and haze to blend the image even further. At the end, when I turned the rock and cabin on, I really didn't like the placement of them, so I decided to make all of it smaller, blend it to the background, and I used again the perspective warp tool to change the perspective of the cabin. I then used my custom grass brush to add a little bit of vegetation on top of the rock, so it didn't look like the cabin is only on top of rock. Then I played around in the camera filter for a while to add a final color grade to my artwork. Now that all the artworks are done, let's quickly compare all of them. If you take a look at the artwork side by side, you can clearly see that they have been created from the same images, but each of them still have a different feeling to each other, so I do think I succeeded with that aspect of the video. I definitely do feel that I could have used some of the images a little bit better. I did some cheap tricks here and there to try to just use an image that I needed to use instead of really implement it into the artwork in a better way. But let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite, and I guess that's it for this video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, it's completely free by the way, and feel free to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with new content. I'll see you in the next video.